future. Cryogenic basically means a very low temperature. What we're using for fuel is cryogenic fluids, and this happens to be liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for this engine. The liquid hydrogen is a frigid negative 240 degrees Celsius as it enters the engine, where it is combined with liquid oxygen. The liquid hydrogen that we cool the thrust chamber with is very cold. Randy Lida is the chief engineer for the CC program. So some of the water that condenses out runs down the inside of the thrust chamber, which is very cold. And when it gets to the nozzle exit area, it's, it's allowed to freeze and can actually grow icicles up to a foot long as the engine's running. That's the cool cryogenic part of the process. But at the same time, the engine is firing hot, providing propulsion. The reaction between liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, once ignited, is a very dynamic um, chemical process and produces a lot of energy. When you burn liquid oxygen and hydrogen, it makes water. Uh, what you see coming out of the back is essentially 5,000 degree steam with some water condensate in it. Basically, if you can think of this rocket as a giant water hose, and it's shooting out water vapor at a high velocity, giving it thrust. NASA wants to control that thrust for use in acceleration, deceleration, and controlling the flight path of Altair. That's the idea behind deep throttling, the ability to control the amount of thrust coming out of the engine. NASA wants to be able to lower it to below 10% of the max capacity. Recent tests have shown significant progress. In this test, we throttle the engine between 100% and 10 percent. Technically that's considered deep throttling. Uh, deep throttling is anything on the ratio of 5 to 1, which would mean going from 100 percent to 20 percent. At 100 percent, full throttle, the engine is putting out 15,000 pounds of thrust. Deep throttling to 10 percent can take that down to just 1,500 pounds of thrust. By adjusting the amount of thrust, the crowd